ओके आई रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन सभी से दरख्वास्त है कृपया जहाँ है वहाँ विराजमान ही रहें क्योंकि ये जो आने वाला सेशन है इट्स गोइंग टू बी श्योरली गोइंग टू बी वन ऑफ द बेस्ट दैट वी आर गोइंग टू विटनेस एज आई सेड द टाइटल ऑफ द सेशन इज इंडिया वर्सेज यू के द बिगेस्ट डिप्लोमैटिक वेन एंड फॉर दिस इनक्रेडिबल सेशन वी हैव एन एस्टीम्ड पर्सनैलिटी सईद अकबरुद्दीन जी विथ इन कन्वर्सेशन विद मंजीव सिंह पुरी जी मैं चाहूंगा तालियों के साथ हम इन दोनों महान हस्तियों का स्वागत करें अभिनंदन करें इस मंच पर द ऑथर अम्बेसडर सईद अकबरुद्दीन जी हैज बिन फॉर लॉन्ग इंडिया डिप्लोमेसी इज मोस्ट विजिबल फेस रिसेंटली ही ज्वाइंट एज द डीन ऑफ द कॉटलिया स्कूल ऑफ पब्लिक पॉलिसी फॉलोइंग द डिस्टिंग डिप्लोमैटिक करियर स्पैनिंग मोर देन थ्री डेकेज Entering the Indian Foreign Services in 1985, he retired in April 2020 as the permanent representative of India to the United Nations. I think that calls for an applause, everyone. <laughs> Ambassador Akbaruddin Ji was instrumental in articulating India's foreign policy stance on international issues as the official spokesperson of India's Ministry of External Affairs. He is among the few Indian diplomats who has the distinction. of also serving as an international civil servant in a united nations entity in his book akbaruddin ji presents a behind the scenes account of india's coming of age in world affairs through the prism of this momentous election and as the discussant we are happy to have ambassador manjeev singh puri ji he happens to be a former indian diplomat who has served as the ambassador of india to european union belgium luxembourg and nepal he was also the ambassador deputy permanent representative of india to the un in new york in addition he has served in germany cape town muscat bangkok and karkis he is presently a distinguished fellow at tri the energy and resource institute and i would request the gentlemen to please unfold the conversation and we must give a round of applause thank you ji aapne do cheeze suni hongi ek to aapne ek aajkal bahut prachalit muhavra hai vocal for local wo aapne pichle session mein zarur achhi tarah dekha hoga local interested everyone and there was necessarily a lot of let me say vocal for it very important for every one of us har ek ke liye bahut important hai lekin bharat jaisa desh jo duniya ka sabse bada desh agle 5 saal mein banne wala hai aur ye cheez aap note kariyega bachcho aap ke yahan bhi agar geography ki class hoti hai to aapko kya batate hain ki duniya ka sabse bada desh kaun sa hai भारत तो नहीं बोलते चीन बोलते हैं ना चीन बोलते हैं ना नहीं सबसे बड़ा देश साइज में रूस अदरवाइज पॉपुलेशन में चाइना बोलते हैं ना अब ये मानिएगा कि अगले पांच साल के बाद चाइना नहीं भारत होगा सबसे बड़ा देश आप सोच सकते हैं कि इससे कितना बड़ा फर्क पड़ेगा हमारे देश की मानसिकता के लिए और दुनिया की मानसिकता के बारे में हमारे को समझने के लिए इसलिए चाहे जितना भी इंपॉर्टेंट भारत के लिए लोकल हो और हर एक कंट्री के लिए लोकल इंपॉर्टेंट होता है भारत जैसे देश के लिए विदेश इंटरनेशनल भूगोल और दुनिया वो ही अहमियत रखती है जो छोटे देशों के लिए शायद सिर्फ लोकल रखता है और मुझे बहुत खुशी है कि आज हम लोग आप सबके बीच में हैं और मेरे एक बहुत प्यारे मित्र और भारत के बड़े वरिष्ठ डिप्लोमैट हमारे एम्बेसडर और जैसे किसी ने कहा अभी परहैप्स इंडियन फॉरेन सर्विस के मोस्ट वेल नोन नेम मोस्ट वेल नोन पर्सनालिटी और मैं एक और चीज कहूंगा हम इनको अकबर बुलाते हैं इन्होंने हमारे सर्विस में हमारे सिस्टम में और मैं यहां तक कहूंगा कि भारत सरकार में ये जिस चीज के बारे में ये लोग शायद खंडन कर रहे थे व्हाट्सएप ट्विटर वगैरह लेकिन इन्होंने उसको वहां प्रचलित किया और वो खंडन अपनी जगह है उसकी यूटिलिटी उसको मत अंडर एस्टिमेट करिएगा और अकबर वैसे इनोवेटिव ब्यूरोक्रेट 
जिन्होंने भारत की फॉरेन पॉलिसी को भारत के लोगों तक लाने के लिए और सिर्फ ये बड़ी बड़ी चीजें नहीं नॉन अलाइन मूवमेंट वगैरह आम चीजों में क्या हो रहा है उसको वहां तक लाने के लिए जो इनकी भूमिका रही है मैं मानता हूं कि शायद ही हम में से कोई इनके बिल्कुल कोई पास तो आने वाला नहीं है कोई और लोग ये भी नहीं है जिन्होंने उसको अटेम्प्ट किया मैं मानता हूं हम लोग सब बहुत खुशनसीब हैं कि आज हम इनकी एक किताब है जिसका टाइटल भी बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है उसके बारे में तो बात करेंगे बट वी हैव द प्लेजर एंड प्रिवलेज ऑफ वेलकमिंग मोस्ट वंडरफुल इंडिविजुअल हु बाईज ओन एक्शन हैज पॉसिबली फैशन एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ इंडिया फॉरन पॉलिसी इन टूडेज इरा आज के समय में मे आई प्लीज आस्क यू ऑल टू पुट योर हैंड्स टूगेदर फॉर साइद अकबर वेलकम है अकबर ये सेशन आपका मैं नहीं ज्यादा बोलूंगा लेकिन मैं आपको पहले पहले एक सवाल करना चाहता हूं ये टाइटल बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग है इंडिया वर्सेस द यूके नीचे लिखा हुआ है द ग्रेटर डिप्लोमेटिक विन वगैरह बट आप लोग सब मानेंगे थोड़ा हंसेंगे भी ये बिल्कुल आपने सही कहा ये इंडिया वर्सेज यूके में हम लोगों को बहुत ज्यादा मजा आया भोपाल यहां पर भी आप लोगों को मजा आया होगा यहां पर भी वही शासन रहे हैं जिनकी अंग्रेजी सरकार के साथ कुछ ना कुछ रिलेशनशिप था हमारे दिल्ली में तो हम लोग हमेशा ये याद करते हैं यहां लिखा हुआ ना 75 फाइव ईयर्स पचहत्तर साल अमृत महोत्सव और हम लोग क्या याद करते हैं कि एक झंडा उतरा और दूसरा चढ़ा इसलिए ये अगर डिप्लोमेटिक विन अगर किसी और के साथ होती शायद शायद ये टाइटल ना होता और शायद हम लोगों की भी इतनी जबरदस्त रुचि इंटरेस्ट और मैं ये मानता हूं कि शायद हमें इतनी ज्यादा खुशी भी ना होती अकबर वॉट यू हैव से बात पहले तो मैं ये कहूँगा कि मैं मेरा जन्म केरल में हुआ और मैं दक्षिण भारत से हूँ सो मैं हिंदी कुछ उतनी क्षमता से नहीं बोल पाऊँगा जितनी मंजी पूरी बोल रहे हैं क्योंकि दक्षिण भारत में तेलुगु केरल में मलयालम और कई और भाषाएं होती हैं तो क्षमा कीजिए अगर मैं हिंदी उस क्षमता से नहीं बोल सकूं जैसे आप लोग जानते होंगे क्योंकि अगर बस मैं एक कहानी कहूंगा जब मैं सिविल सर्विस का एग्ज़ाम लिख रहा था तो मेरी हिंदी इतनी बुरी थी कि मैं रोज़ डरता था कि मैं शायद हिंदी के एग्ज़ाम में फेल हो जाऊंगा और कोई और करेक्ट भी नहीं करेगा मेरा मेन पेपर क्योंकि हिंदी और इंग्लिश का कंपलसरी पेपर था और मेरी एक छोटी बहन थी जो मेरे से शायद दस साल यंगर थी तो वो टेंथ क्लास में थी और वो रोज़ मुझे डराती थी तुम्हारी हिंदी फेल <laughs> तो बस भगवान की कृपा है कि मैं निकल गया और दुनिया और विदेश मंत्रालय में जा घुसा जहाँ पर ज़्यादातर लोग बहुत ही क्षमता से हिंदी बोलते हैं आ, तो क्षमा कीजिए अगर मैं अंग्रेज़ी में ज़्यादातर आप लोगों का जवाब दूं आ, क्योंकि मेरी सोच ज़्यादातर अंग्रेज़ी में है कमिंग बैक टू व्हाट यू हैव सेड मंजीव आई चोज द टाइटल बिकॉज एज यू सेड इफ आई हैड सेड इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस नो बडी वुड बी इंटरेस्टेड इफ आई सेड battle at the united nations nobody would be interested so i thought about it and as you said rightly it was the first time that we were involved generally we are not interested in elections in in international bodies we are all interested in elections in state or within our country elections in international bodies are only for diplomats and many people think diplomacy is mostly about protocol and alcohol but i am neither uh, attuned to either of these so i said let me try and think what will appeal to an ordinary indian when we try and bring diplomacy ya to main badi badi baatein kar sakta tha 
balance of power, territorial integrity, sovereignty, uh, justice. ये सब मैं बोल सकता था लेकिन मैंने सोचा कि अगर मैं ये सब बोलूं तो कौन पढ़ेगा ये पढ़ेंगे वही जो मेरे दोस्त हैं मंजी पूरी जैसे लेकिन मेरा मेरी ये ख्वाहिश थी कि ये डिप्लोमेसी के बारे में लोग जो डिप्लोमेट्स नहीं हैं वो पढ़ें और समझें तो इसलिए मैंने एक ऐसा टाइटल चुना जो आपको या तो हमारी आज़ादी के बारे में याद दिलाता है और वहाँ पर मैं ये याद करूँगा कि मध्य प्रदेश की एक बहुत ही फेमस पॉलिटिकल पर्सनालिटी थे श्रीमती सुषमा स्वराज जिन्होंने मुझे हर दिन याद दिलाया ये आज़ादी की दूसरी लड़ाई है हमें जीतना ही होगा वो विदिशा से मेंबर ऑफ पार्लियामेंट भी थी आ, और वो हमारी विदेश मंत्री थी तो उन्होंने बार बार मुझे ये याद होता था कि ये उनके लिए एक महत्व अलग था क्योंकि जिन्होंने देखा था कि आज़ादी में कितनी मुश्किल हुई थी हमें और दूसरा ये था कि जो क्रिकेट में इंटरेस्ट हैं उन्हें तो क्रिकेट की बैटल्स की याद हैं आजकल भारत में पॉलिटिक्स और क्रिकेट के अगर आप लिस्ट लगाएं तो टू ऑफ द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स आर क्रिकेट पॉलिटिक्स मे बी बॉलीवुड एज अ थर्ड तो इसलिए मैंने एक नाम चुना जो ऑर्डनरी लोगों से लिंक हो आ, मुझे पता है कि बहुत सारे डिप्लोमेट्स कहते हैं ये क्या लगा रखा है आपने नाम लेकिन बहुत सारे लोग जो बाहर बियॉन्ड विदेश मंत्रालय पढ़े हैं ये कहते हैं हाँ हमें ये समझ में आ रहा है डिप्लोमेसी क्या है क्योंकि डिप्लोमेसी इज नॉट ओनली अबाउट ये बड़े बड़े शब्द इट इज ऑल्सो अबाउट ऑर्डनरी ह्यूमन बींग्स इट इज अबाउट पीपल हु वर्क बिहाइंड द सीन्स एंड ब्रिंग अबाउट चेंज एंड दैट्स वाई आई चूज दैट नेम टू अपील टू ऑर्डनरी पीपल Akbar thank you i must tell you it sounded very good it made us feel good ye aapne jo title choose kiya is title ne hum sab ka jisko kehte hain garv bada it has made us feel proud for a variety of historical reasons after all sab kuch everything is rooted in history but let me ask you a different kind of question to aap logon ko shayad main unse pehle ye kehta hu ki bahut sanshep mein bilkul brief mein if you will just tell us what is the international court of justice what is this election and how does it take place ye aap logon ko zarur isliye pata hona chahiye ki phir uske baad agar main inko sawal karunga power game ka to aap usko samajh payenge kyunki jab tak aap ye na samajh paye ki ye election hai kya aur kis liye iski ahmiyat hai to shayad isko appreciate karna ki ye kitni badi win thi not only diplomatic but win for india in india's position in the global order so akbar let's hear a little bit from you about the icj and the election process itself so if i can respond manjeev international diplomacy or international relations is not a level playing field हमें ये सब याद रखना चाहिए कि इट नेवर वॉज एंड इट नेवर विल बी पहैप्स हम समझते हैं सबको एक होना चाहिए सब लोग जैसे कि आप लोग बच्चे जानते हैं वोटिंग में सबको एक वोट होना चाहिए ये ऐसी एक इलेक्शन है ऐसा एक इलेक्शन है जिसमें पांच लोगों को एक से ज्यादा है और बाकी 100 187 को एक वोट है और पांच को दो वोट हैं आप क्या कहेंगे इसको ये तो गलत है लेकिन हम सब मान गए हैं कि यही है उसूल अब अगर आपको किसी ने कहा कि आप एक इलेक्शन लड़िए जिसमें किसी आपके प्रतिद्वंदी जो हैं उनको डबल हैं आपसे ज्यादा वोट आप क्या कहेंगे ये तो मैं जीत ही नहीं सकता क्योंकि इनके तो अनफेयर एडवांटेज है और ये अनफेयर एडवांटेज इतना ही स्ट्रॉन्ग है कि आपको एक वोट है 190 में उनको भी है एक वो, एक वोट 190 में 
पंद्रह में उनको एक वोट है और पांच साथ हैं पांच मिले जुले हैं उनको पांच वो पांच अपने आप में वोट करते रहते हैं अगर मेरा दोस्त है तो मैं उसको करूंगा वो जब मेरा कैंडिडेट है मैं करूंगा लेकिन आपको वोट ही नहीं है तो आप कैसे जीत सकते हैं ये कॉन्टेस्ट ये कॉन्टेस्ट इट वॉज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट अनइक्वल कॉन्टेस्ट अवेयर इफ इट वॉज इन अ नेशनल इलेक्शन डॉक्टर कुरेशी इज यर ही वुड कॉल इट अल्ट्रा वायरस ही वुड से दिस इज नॉट फेयर आई विल ब्रिंग इट टू एन एंड राइट नाउ बट दैट इज वॉट वॉज इन द यू एन चार्टर दैट दिस इज एन इलेक्शन वेयर यू हैव टू विन ट्वाइस वंस इन अ बॉडी ऑफ वन नाइंटी थ्री कंट्रीज विच इज कॉल्ड द जनरल असेंबली एंड साइमल्टेनियसली इन अ बॉडी ऑफ फिफ्टीन विच इज कॉल्ड द सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल वेयर फाइव हैव गॉट टूगेदर सो आउट ऑफ फिफ्टीन फाइव विल वोट फॉर योर अपोनेंट ऑटोमेटिकली बिफोर द वोटिंग स्टार्ट सो यू हैव टू गेट नाइन फ्रॉम द रेस्ट ऑफ द टेन सो आप समझ सकते हैं कितनी डिफिकल्टी है दैट्स वाई नो बडी हैज वन दैट इलेक्शन अगेंस्ट ए परमानेंट मेंबर और शायद ही कोई विल विन इन द फ्यूचर इट वॉज लक हार्ड वर्क गॉड्स ग्रेस फॉर्चून वॉट एवर यू कैन से बट इट ऑल्सो रिफ्लेक्टेड दैट द वर्ल्ड वॉज चेंजिंग आज आप लोग देख रहे हैं यूक्रेन में दुनिया कैसे बदल रही है चार साल पांच साल पहले दिस वॉज वन ऑफ द फर्स्ट सिग्नल दैट द वर्ल्ड वॉज चेंजिंग वेन अ कंट्री टू कॉन वन ऑफ द एस्टैब्लिश पावर्स एंड बीट दैम एट देर ओन गेम इट वॉज नेवर हैपन इन द हिस्ट्री ऑफ द यूनाइटेड नेशन परहैप्स इट विल नेवर हैपन अगेन बिकॉज इट इज ए रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ इंडिया and it's standing that time at the world stage uh, and that the world order was changing and people were acknowledging that the old system cannot continue the same change you can see right now in different ways so that's in in a nutshell why this is so important thank you akbar very well said dekho bachcho main aapki taraf zara dhyan karta hu united nations ke bare mein aap logo ne suna hoga वहां पर पांच कंट्रीज हैं जिनके पास वीटो है जो परमानेंट मेंबर्स हैं अमेरिका रूस चीन फ्रांस और ब्रिटेन ये इलेक्शन इसलिए बहुत अहमियत वाला है कि जो इलेक्शन में दो उम्मीदवार थे एक भारत का था और एक ग्रेट ब्रिटेन का था ये नहीं कि ब्रिटेन का समर्थक था उसका लेकिन ब्रिटेन का खुद अपना कैंडिडेट था और जीतने के लिए इलेक्शन उस बॉडी सिक्योरिटी काउंसिल में भी आपको जीतना है जहां पर ये पांच बैठे हुए जो सिर्फ अपनी तरफ अपने लिए वोट करेंगे अभी अंबेसडर अकबरुद्दीन ने आप लोगों को समझाया कि ये एक बहुत जबरदस्त पावर प्ले का गेम है यूनाइटेड नेशंस में सारे ही इलेक्शंस पावर प्ले के होते हैं आपके पास कितना दम है चाहे कैंडिडेट हो जस्टिस दलवीर भंडारी लेकिन वोट तो भारत के लिए हो रहा था बहुत सब लोग उनका सी पढ़ेंगे सब लोग चीजें देखेंगे लेकिन असल में कैंडिडेट थे अंबेसडर अकबरुद्दीन भारत के प्रतिनिधि लोग इनकी तरफ देख रहे थे इनके लिए वोट दे रहे थे इन्होंने बहुत कहा कि भारत का भाव वहां पर जज हो रहा था लेकिन यह तो एक साइड है कहानी की दूसरी साइड जो इन्होंने नहीं कही लेकिन हमें सबको माननी पड़ेगी जो बुक पढ़ने पर आपको समझ आएगी वो थे इनके टैक्टिक्स अंडरस्टैंडिंग के प्रोसेस क्या है? आप लोगों को मैं ये कहूं एंड अकबर इट बी वेरी नाइस इफ यू विल एक्सप्लेन अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट द प्रोसेस क्योंकि असल में हम लोग जब बात करते हैं नेशनल इलेक्शंस की तो सिर्फ ये बात करते हैं कि जाइए कौन सबसे आगे आ गया वो जीत गया खत्म हुई बात लेकिन छोटे इलेक्शंस जो होते हैं वो बहुत ज्यादा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड होते हैं क्योंकि उनका जो प्रोसेस सिर्फ ये नहीं है कि आप दौड़ो जो सबसे पहले आएगा वो जीत जाएगा उनमें कई और किस्म की वेटेजेस होती हैं और उसको समझना उसको परखना और उसके दायरे में काम करना जबकि इतना भारी प्रतिद्वंदी था हमारा सो अकबर बी ग्रेट इफ यू वुड एक्सप्लेन अ लिटिल बिट अबाउट द प्रोसेस हाउ इन सम सेंसेस वी रीच द पॉइंट वेर इट लुक्ड इनएविटेबल दैट थिंग्स वॉन्ट हैपन एंड देन द चेंज 
and those have been beautifully described by you in the last days of what happened. And we can talk about Britain's inability or misjudgment, that's not the point. But frankly, in my opinion, they, they were forced into the misjudgment if we use that word. And that's your credit. So let's hear from you. So uh, usually most people think government officials and diplomats are not very cerebral. They think that are wo to jaakar field mein kaam karte hain. Intellectuals to baithte hain think tanks mein, universities mein, uh, aur kahin aur, uh, shayad TV studios mein bhi. Uh, aaj kal to sab baithe hain hai, wahan par. Lekin baat ye hai, uh, in diplomacy, it is as important to understand issues and their intellectual basis as to implement. Implementation is one way. You can see that every time people go and implement something. Like Manjeev said, go and win. You get more votes, win. But we have studied it. When we studied the history of the whole election in the 70 years, then we knew that no. The people who have got the most votes in the first time, they don't win. We have put a whole ऐसा डेटा लगाया कि चलिए चार्ट बनाकर देखेंगे कौन कैसा जीतता है तब हमें पता चला कि जो बड़े बॉडी में जो 190 में जो जीतते हैं वो हर बार 15 में भी जीत जाते हैं एंड में पहले तो ऐसा लगता है कि वो नहीं जीतेंगे लेकिन अगर बार बार इलेक्शन हो तो क्योंकि 190 में इलेक्शन बहुत ही बदलता नजर आता है क्योंकि जब लोग देखते हैं अरे एक जीत रहा है उसके पीछे सब लोग जाते हैं पंद्रह में ज्यादा फर्क नहीं होता है सात आठ नौ छ तो पंद्रह में फर्क नहीं लगता है लेकिन लोगों इसमें एक हमने ये पता किया था कि जब आप ब्रिटेन जैसे कंटेस्टेंट से कंटेस्ट करते हैं तो उनके टूल्स यूज कीजिए और उनके टूल्स क्या है रूल ऑफ लॉ इक्वालिटी फेयरनेस एंड Majority should prevail. We are all democracies. So we looked at all this and we understood we must use the same tools against them. So when we started the election with the UK, we were winning in the General Assembly and they were winning in the Security Council as understandable. And they used every tool at their hand because they are in the Security Council. So they told everybody who is who has a case in the Security Council, India is not going to help you here. We are here. We will help you. Why are you wasting your time on India? And one ambassador told me, she was sitting and going to make her speech. The British diplomat came and said, don't forget, I know that you are voting for India. Change it now. You may think that this is, again, if Dr. Qureshi was there, he would have disbarred him. But, in international relations, everything is fair. You can do all these things and get away with it. Unfortunately, there are no central election commissioners in international relations. I'm not saying that we should go down that path, <laughs> but all I meant was it is strength. And in that instance, we displayed greater strength. Manjeev was saying that I was responsible, no. I am only what you can say a mukhota. I used to be the face there. I am like a trench warrior fighting in the trenches. Uh, it was India's general image. It was the belief that India was a power on the rise and the UK was a power on the decline. That showed it and that's why the flags, if you see carefully, one flag is going up, one flag is coming down. And that was actually the story of this election that we outthought, we not only outfought the British, we outthought them. And perhaps very that is responsible for our victory. Akbar, very well said. And how very opportune. Azadi ka pachatarva amrit mahotsav, konsa jhanda nicha utra, konsa upar gya. Very well said. I want to ask you about one specific thing which is mentioned in your book. पिछले बहुत सालों से अब भारत का झुकाव या इन सम सेंसेस हम लोग बहुत प्राउड होते थे 
कि हम एक किस्म का न्यूट्रल कंट्री है नॉन अलाइंड हम अपने आप को कहते थे लेकिन आप सब जानते हैं कि पिछले कई सालों से हमने अपनी नीति में थोड़ा सा झुकाव समझिएगा कि हम वेस्टर्न कंट्रीज खासकर यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स के साथ हमने अपने रिलेशनशिप्स बहुत बढ़िया किए और यहां तक कि अभी आपने क्वाड का नाम सुना और बहुत सारी चीजों में प्रधानमंत्री के उनके प्रेसिडेंट के साथ बहुत करीबी रिश्ते बने लेकिन समझिएगा ये एंड अकबर आई विल आस्क यू टू स्पीक ऑन दिस पर्टिकुलर थिंग विच यू हैव मेंशन इन योर बुक टू जबकि ये इतना महत्वपूर्ण इलेक्शन यूनाइटेड नेशंस में भारत के लिए हुआ तो सुनिएगा दृष्टिकोण यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑफ अमेरिका का और साथ में यह मैं उनसे जरूर पूछना चाहूंगा कि उसको न्यूट्रलाइज करने में आपने क्या पेचीदियां क्या टैक्टिक्स और क्या इंफ्लुएंसेस यूज किए क्योंकि उसको टू सम एक्सटेंट न्यूट्रलाइज करना एक बहुत ही अहम एलिमेंट ऑफ द टैक्टिक्स नेसेसरी to employ to win in this election was there akbar let's hear from you the united states and india so you all know that our ties with the united states are on the ascendants it's not uh, a hidden secret uh, yet not only it's not only the issue of united states i'll come to that but we all know how the united states and russia are on different sides right now and they were also on different sides for many years yet both of them combined the ambassadors when i went and met them they said the russian ambassador said to me our ties with you are better than our ties with the united kingdom we agree we also agree that your judge will be better for us than the uk's judge but be careful in diplomacy there's always a but everybody says something and then he says but means something else is coming so he said but ambassador this is a long standing understanding between i said is it written he said no it is not written but we will always vote for them and they will vote for us despite we don't like him we don't like united kingdom but we will vote for him so this is one but let's look at the other but here sometimes the but is also helpful united kingdom and usa are very good friends they are more allied than we are that is true although our ties are improving but <laughs> there was one lady one lady who was once known as nimrita kaur who later became nikki haley any anybody heard of nikki haley right it was our good fortune that nikki haley was the ambassador of the us there so i called her i don't know very much punjabi i had asked one of my other colleagues to tell me some good words in punjabi that can i speak to nikki haley because i told you i am from dakshin bharat and if manji was there it would have been such a benefit but i told nikki nikki <laughs> have some uh, understanding i will not say what choices punjabi words i used <laughs> because it is best left outside this discussion and i told her look we are all friends you vote for the uk we have no problem but don't go and canvass for the uk number one second he was a politician not a diplomat so i told her nikki if what the uk was telling was let's postpone this election so i told just imagine if the voting is ready ballot boxes are ready one day before or the morning of the election if we tell you election is not held what will you think she said of course i will think that you fix this election you are stopping me from winning i said that's it don't stop this election and i told her let us vote now five there would be multiple rounds of votes i just said chalo panch rounds aaj and tomorrow if we don't win 
we we are gone we are, you can uh, have find somebody then i said you know i am involved in this election so maybe i'm not the right person to negotiate kal why don't they negotiate in delhi in uk london we have my very good friend there ambassador yash sina he is very sophisticated he can um, uh, work it out with you but let us have this election so basically in punjabi and hindi and english i cajoled her and said let this election go on knowing fully well uk will not agree to this election going on because they will keep on losing more 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 and it will become they will have 40 votes in the end and it is not sustainable for anybody with 40 out of 192 to contest of course nikki was the nice truly at heart indian said ha theek hai she said is bar main tumhari baat maan leti hu kal tak waqt hai so she gave us time and space she did not change anything very much but she provided that time and space which helped us to contest and the uk knew that if they contest they are gone so they decided between losing repeatedly and withdrawing which is better if you were given a choice bar bar haro ya yahan se bhag niklo kya lenge aap harenge bar bar ya kahenge chalo ek bar yahan se bhag nikalte hain uk also said he who runs away lives to fight another day they ran away aur hum election jeet gaye akbar absolutely fantastic and then he says that he was not responsible he is a wonderful diplomat incidentally this book starts with the exact opposite example in 1947 india was pitted against ukraine for a seat in the security council and i don't know if britain took a leaf out of the indian book but maybe akbar you'd like to tell people that story too it's topic so how history changes with different situations in 1947 this was india's first election after independence so we were wanting to win it mrs vijay lakshmi pandit was sent there there were a huge delegation etc we were contesting against ukraine to be on the security council for the first time in 1947 and it went into many rounds like now unfortunately fate was against us we lost that election if we had won that election the issue of jammu and kashmir would not have come to the united nations security council look how just one election one loss has made us put be on the back foot for 70 years if we had won that we would have been in the security council they would not have been that discussion in 1948 january we would history would have been very different for generations of indian diplomats alas we lost that to ukraine today if we contest against ukraine we will win 9 times or 99 times out of 100 but that one time that mattered we lost very well said akbar very very well said now let me take you to another facet in the book which is very important for all of you to realize that even at the united nations diplomacy and action is not only about what the ambassador and his embassy are doing ambassador akbaruddin mentioned to you you can negotiate in delhi you can negotiate in london but do you know how negotiations are actually carried out they are not carried out in any gentlemanly fashion sitting across the table they are invariably about power games by power people and now i am going to ask him to tell us this wonderful story which involved a member of parliament from madhya pradesh and why i am telling you for this story not because the power person in india was less powerful or less willing to exercise the power but to give you an illustration of how the real world actually functions in the world so to put it simply in a different way 
forget the fact that people wear ties, suits and the best branded clothes. Their actions tend to be only power packed. And I think it's best that this particular thing which is mentioned in the book and highlighted in a number of articles is brought to you straight by the one person who would have been directly affected and which is Ambassador Akbaruddin Akbar. Tell us about the phone calls. Yes. So, uh, as Manjeev said, diplomacy is not only in United Nations, it's all over the world. So, we realized that they are also trying the UK. And they, they were raising the level. Every level we try, they go to the next level. So, Boris Johnson, who is, the press, who is the Prime Minister of UK now, he was the Foreign Secretary. So, we got to know he wants to talk to Mrs. Sushma Swaraj. And it was about 10.30 in the night or around 11 o'clock. And the Foreign Secretary, who is now the External Affairs Minister, Mr. Uh, Dr. Jai Shankar, called me. He says, this Boris Johnson wants to call uh, 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 Mrs. Sushma Swaraj. And I said, no, 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 he cannot. Don't allow them to talk. He said, why, why, what's happened? She says, he wants, I said, he wants to do a deal. He will say, let us share this. You and India and UK are friends. So half, half we will share it. I said, we have to stop it. And she cannot say no. If supposing prime ministers or foreign ministers talk to each other and say, we are friends, let us share this cake. This is the same cake. You take half and we take half. You take the first half. How will she say no? Whereas naughty guys like me can say, Are Baba, we'll dig. tomorrow we'll talk. Let us vote now. <laughs> so I said, please don't allow her to talk. But I wasn't too certain whether he will listen to me. He will say, Are, he ambassador hai, aise bolta hai. I have to look at my relations with UK, with USA. He will not. Maybe he may. I had a doubt. So I called Mrs. Swaraj at 11 o'clock in the night. She said, Akbar, kya baat hai? Kyun don't kar rahe ho? I said, Madam, Wo phone karenge, aap phone mat uthaiye. She said, Are, kya bol rahe ho tum phone mat uthaiye, wo to foreign minister hai. Madam, I said, Madam, aap bol dije, aapke jo uthane wale hai, unko bol dije. Madam, so gai hai, gyaara baj gai. Kya baat hai? So she laughed and said, Madam, ye baat meri sun lije. Please, please sun lije. Then she, she was very fine uh, uh, minister. She said, Akbar, mene tumhari ba, itni saari baat hai sun lije. Chalo, ye baat bhi sun leti hoon. And Boris Johnson Ford, sorry, madam has gone to sleep. It is 11 o'clock in India tomorrow morning. That's what I wanted. Tomorrow morning you talk in India, wherever. We know that tomorrow morning is not going to come for UK. And Mrs. Swaraj said, ha ha, phone aaya tha mera, mene ke diya unko na. Done. Within 15 minutes of that, the British ambassador phoned me. We are withdrawing. Now, I don't know. Maybe he was phoning to say we are withdrawing. I don't know. But we, knowing the British, 100%, 99%, I think he was going to say, share this. So why should I share when the whole cake is mine? <laughs> and Madam Sushma Swaraj bought the cake to us. So the, the moral of the story is that everybody plays a role. Ministers play a role. Prime Minister plays a role. There is one photograph in this book which shows how the Prime Ministers got our first vote before we even announced. All of you, again, Dr. Qureshi will say, this is illegal. This is announcement ke, uh, kaise kar rahe ho canvassing. But we, before we even put the formal candidature, we got a letter one day from Uzbekistan. If you put India's top 10 friends, Uzbekistan is not in that. So the, I said, how did Uzbekistan come? And he came, ambassador came and said, whoever is India's candidate, we want to vote for him. I said, how did you, where did this come? We didn't even start it. He said, Prime Minister Modi met our president. And you know, when the president told me, go now, go to the Indian embassy. Tell them that we are supporting you. So different people play different roles, right from prime minister to foreign minister to people like me and many young diplomats. I have to lay, give tribute to many, many young diplomats who played a role. This was like a team effort 
of the entire ministry. Manjeev is sitting here, he was in Nepal. I used to pester him, why Nepali? He says, don't worry, they are with you. Manjeev, please go back again. Again ask them. Repeatedly, I was pestering all our ambassadors, so everybody played a role. It was like for us. So if you see now, ki Ukraine mein, how did India get 22,500 people out? Because the Ministry of External Affairs knows how to work like a team. We are only team players. Manjeev and I are on, on the same team. We know each other for 30 years, 35 years, so it's easy to wake him up in the night, to worry him and say, now you go and do this. I was doing that because I knew many of my friends all over the world were working. So if this is a victory, it is a victory attributable to India's team. And that is what was more important than individuals. Akbar, thank you. You know, the message here, and I'm so glad you said it so well and eloquently. This is a message that this, is in, this was taken as a national endeavor. If you heard what Ambassador Akbaruddin said, that different elements of the government, and incidentally, Boris Johnson wanted to call the Nepalese Prime Minister, who the, for the same reason said that he'd had a drink too many. <laughs> so, you know, life is like that. Uh, not that that one vote would have mattered. But the point is, when India takes on things as a national endeavor, and that's, you know, there are three or four points in Ambassador Akbaruddin's book, which are very important for all people who are interested in India in the world stage. In my opinion, one is, of course, the changing role of India and the world's perception of India. And the second thing is, when you take things as a national endeavor, how different elements work. What he's understating and underplaying is his role in strumming this beautiful four-string guitar. But the role of the individual is absolutely critical. You know, I want to quote something to you, which he writes towards the end, but which is absolutely seminal and very important for all of us to understand, whose understanding of elections is based on what happens in India. So national elections are often a metaphor for change. In the international arena, this is rarely so. While many reasons account for this, it is primarily because the nature of contestation is fundamentally different. It's fundamentally a power play. And that is why you rarely see in the United Nations and elsewhere the more powerful actually losing. And that's why this book is very important. Its message is perhaps even more important. Its message, and Akbar, congratulations to you, because it was you who led the team. It was you who recorded all this and recorded it for posterity for all of us, not just our colleagues, but for younger people in India to feel inspired by what you've done. And this is the India that we look forward to in the 75th year of our independence as we move forward, as I said, not only to become the largest country in the world, but possibly the second or the third largest economy in the world. Akbar, the book has documented something for which each and every one of us as individuals, as citizens of the country, must acknowledge your role, your tactics, your understanding, and the way you not only played the international community, but balanced all of us in our fostering. Congratulations to you. You made India proud, and obviously you made all of us, members of the Indian Foreign Service, and all those involved with the India Strait, extremely proud. Fantastic, and thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. I would like to now open the floor for the audience to ask questions. Are there any questions from the audience? Please. The first question has to go to that gentleman. Uh, greetings, sir. I'm Mekas Singh Alwali. I'm a volunteer with Bhopal Literature Festival. So my question was, with the India being the global consumer market, uh, these ties nowadays, the ties with Soviet Union for now India's purchasing, uh, 
millions of barrels of oil at a 22% discount. Will this, will this policy, will this, will this policy, uh, the, will this uh, thing affect in our future consumer market with our allies and different countries that India is buying, uh, India is buying uh, oil from Russia that, that, that is not meant to be. Whether Russia is facing legal, uh, very financial sanctions and many different sanctions on a, on a next level where United States is trying to stop the Russian economy and India is purchasing uh, a discounted uh, oil at discounted price. Will this affect India's policy with the Western allies? Thank you, young man, for asking a question which is both the logical and also pertinent in today's environment. Uh, so we need to understand that uh, as Manjeev recollected in this book, everybody pursues their interests. We were friends with Rush Russia, yet Russia voted for UK. They, we did not say, now you are my friend for 50 years and uh, so you are not voting for me, now I am angry with you. <laughs> Nations don't do like, <laughs> like we do individually. Sometimes maybe your best friend is, has other better friends. So, if somebody is offering me at 22.5% discount, let me ask you, if you get a 22.5% discount on anything, will you take or not? That's it. If, if young, enterprising people like you know where your interest stands, let us accept that a country like ours also understands its interests. There are no legal restrictions on buying any oil from any country except Iran right now. So, United States decided it does not want to buy from Russia. All the best to it. Maybe four other countries don't uh, also decide we will get cheaper and we will take at 30%, 35%. But countries know where their interests are. Also the others know. We did not get upset with Russia or the US or, or the UK for doing all the other things that they did to us. But that's all right. In this game, each one looks out of his, their own interests. And it is not against our interests right now. We are not violating any legal uh, requirement, either from the US itself or from the global community. So enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> uh, any other questions? I, say, I want to ask Akbar a question. Akbar, do you know how Justice Bhandari voted in the ICJ on the Ukraine-Russian case. So, I know that. Um, Manjeev, uh, let us agree that you gave the answer actually. You said that it did, does not matter who the person is. Everybody votes for India. Nobody voted for Justice Bhandari. Many people told me actually the UK candidate is better. He is more qualified in international law terms. But your candidate doesn't even have international law experience. Okay, he may be a judge in the Indian Supreme Court, but he doesn't have. But, remember the but? <laughs> but, we will vote for you because he represents India. Now, of course, your argument is Mr. Bhandari voted in a certain case on his Sure, he voted, but he, this is not against India's interests if a judge in the uh, ICJ voted on a specific issue uh, with the overwhelming majority. There was only one other judge which voted. So if you say, doc, if you say that Judge Bhandari does not or judges in the ICJ don't reflect their country's opinion, don't look at Justice Bhandari's vote. Look at the vote of the Russian judge. Look at the vote of the Chinese judge. So, they were all pursuing their interests. So, all individuals, I, many t I was elected in my, as, uh, into the, one of the UN's biggest bodies for uh, administrative matters, when I was a first secretary. You think they voted for a first secretary? No! They didn't even know who Sayyid Akbaruddin was that time in 1990s. But, I was amongst those 12 or 14 guys who was hosted into the administrative committee on budgetary questions and I knew I was not there because of me. It is supposed to be independent experts. I was neither independent nor an expert. <laughs> I acknowledge it, 
but I was India's candidate, so I went through. So let's accept it that the diplomacy is about interstate activity. Individuals, again, are secondary to it. You know, this is a very interesting point which you've just made. In countries in the developing world, including India, where, if you notice, we often speak in terms of UN ne wo kar diya, UN ye kehta hai. We tend to forget that at the core it is an intergovernmental organization. We also, therefore, very often look at, and I'm making a very a bit of a controversial point here, we often tend to look at four positions there, what, if I may say so, is good people. What the countries who actually run the show look for is our people. This is just to take advantage of Akbar's book and presence here, to mention to you the way international power play works in international governance. There was somebody else with a question there. Yes. Please, sir. I'm, I'm, my oh, name is oh, Kostub. Here. I work in an IT company as a marketing person and I was in UK for some time. So I learned a beautiful thing from one of the person. I would like to give an example first and then get your views on that. So we lost in one deal with one of the largest British company and we lost it badly. While our presentation was best and we were best. Like we knew we will win. Next day we got a letter that you are not there. So then we hired one of the person from Britain himself and then he taught us how to deal with them. He, told, he actually taught us a very uh, excellent way to deal with them. Is to go at, get it approved before the meeting itself and then go in the meeting. So then you end your meeting in five minutes and you get approval. So is it true in the international politics with UK as well? And can you, can you share any such experiences you had with, with uh, British as such? So UK thought that they had won the election before they contested it. Because it is in the UN charter that they are permanent members. And therefore, whatever the deal had in 1945 doesn't exist for us today. In 1945 was the situation different. So, there will be many such instances. It is true that in diplomacy, the best diplomat works out the deal before he goes into the field. So, why do you think the UK withdrew? Because out of milk of kindness? No. <laughs> because they understood it. They come into the election ring, they will get 40 votes. So that's the way it works. Quietly we do it, we frighten them, we bully them, we do many things, we can't tell you, including uh, Mrs. Susma Swaraj not talking to their foreign minister. <laughs> they understood who's the boss there. So therefore they decided better to run away. The, the, the very same example, <laughs> you know, with the duplicitous, you need to be duplicitous. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, thank, I'm thank Shlok Chandra. Uh, my question is this, that, you know, uh, as diplomats, you helped uh, Justice Dalbir Bhandari get appointed to ICJ. Now, when a contentious issue before ICJ comes, do the diplomats uh, have the right or privilege to, say, whisper something in his ear? Or as the saying goes, that uh, once he's elected, the ship is sailed? So, um, the Jadav case. Uh, was decided after Bhandari was elected. In fact, my book says he was only elected because of the Jadav case. Absolutely. Otherwise, we were not wanting to have a candidate also. Uh, and what happened? He delivered. You will not call it in publicly. We will not accept it. We is an independent job. The ship has sailed. We are no longer involved in it. It's like the Russians and all. The, who they, did they vote for now? Or Look at the voting history of any judge. Show me the voting history of a judge of the ICJ who has voted against his country. They are not going to be there. And why does even the ICJ acknowledges it? Because when a country doesn't have a judge, they allow you to appoint a judge for that case. Why? And always those judges vote for the country concerned. So it is an established fact. We don't need to dig into it and uh, reveal it to public. Everybody knows what it is. We started by saying it's not a level playing field. So that's how. And that is why what Akbar writes, that it is an unprecedented diplomatic win. Great. 
it's also a reflection tremendously of where the UK has gone. It's not just that the flag has gone down a few inches, a hell of a lot less more than that, and a reflection of the change in the global power balance. And therefore, what was achieved there is seminally much more than just the win. It's the reflection and something that certainly catches the eye of anyone who is an observer in this particular game. It's a seminal act. Thank you, speakers, for entertaining these questions. Thank you so much for this wonderful session. Now I would like to request Abhilash, sir, uh, of the Society of Culture. So on behalf of the organizers, the our, um, society, uh, may I request all the audience to give a standing ovation to the person who got the Indian victory, Sayyad Akbaruddin. I want to make it this session very memorable. And thank you very much, sir, for the Indian victory many, many few years ago. And uh, hearty congratulations to you. I had had the opportunity to travel with Mr. Akbaruddin to Mexico and South Africa many years ago when Prime Minister Manmohan Singh was the Prime Minister. And I also had a good relations with uh, Sushma Swaraj, who was living just about half a kilometer from here for many years in Bhopal. So hearty congratulations to you and thank you very much, sir. Over to Raghav Chandraji. Now I would request Raghav sir, the Director of Society and Culture and Environment to please come forward and felicitate the author and the discussant with the memento as a symbol of love, respect and gratitude. The painting is the BLF 20, uh, 2022 mascot and it is based on tribal art by Padmashri Bhuribhai Ji. <laughs> 